Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Framework Chromebook. This looks a lot like Framework's other laptop, which is completely upgradable, and that is because it is almost identical to that other machine, except this one is designed for Chrome OS. In fact, they even stamped it on the casing here. And so there are some limitations with this one when it comes to what operating system you run on it, but it is not limited in what you can do from an upgrade standpoint. And of course, upgradability is something we don't often see on Chromebooks. And we're going to take a closer look at this machine in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Framework. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $1,000. This, of course, is a lot for a Chromebook, but we're starting to see a lot of these mid-range to upper-level Chromebooks making their way into the marketplace, and clearly there is a market for them. And I would guess it's probably in education and in other institutions that are heavily invested in the Chrome ecosystem. Now, this has a 13.5-inch display running at 2256 by 1504. As you can see, it's more square than your typical laptop. That's because it's in a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. And this works out really nicely for document editing and that sort of thing. It runs at 400 nits of brightness and 100% of sRGB. Now, the review unit we got has an i5-1240p processor along with 256 gigabytes of storage and 8 gigabytes of RAM. Of note, though, if you are intending to get the most out of this, you should add another RAM stick to the mix. And that is exactly what we did earlier on a live stream. Now, what they encourage you to do with this machine is to take it apart. In fact, you get a screwdriver here in the box. That's the only tool you need to get into the system and access it. All you've got to do is loosen up the five screws at the bottom. And when you do that, you'll have access to the internals here. And as you can see, everything has a barcode label on it. And those barcode labels will take you to the Framework website where you can purchase some of the parts that you might need if something were to go wrong on your laptop. As you can see, you can even swap out the main board if you want. So over time, you can upgrade this machine and add more to it. And one of the things that we did was immediately upgrade the RAM. And the reason why I upgraded the RAM is because it only came with 8 gigabytes of RAM in a single channel configuration, and you'll get the most performance out of these Intel processors graphically when you have two sticks of RAM on board. And one of the cool things that we went through on this was getting its included 8 gigabytes of RAM to go up to a whopping 64 gigabytes, which is the maximum. Now, you're not seeing the full 64 on screen here, and that's because the RAM is shared with the video memory, but you can get this thing fully decked out. You can also upgrade the storage, of course, and everything else on the main board as well. Now, one thing, though, that's a little different on this device versus the other framework is that it's designed primarily for Chrome OS. Now, this does support Core Boot, which is an open source firmware for booting up other operating systems, but Framework is really encouraging people that want to have the most flexibility in regards to operating systems to look at their other laptop, which is open to just about anything that's compatible. This one is fairly well locked down into the Chrome OS ecosystem because it is being sold as a Chromebook. And if we look at the keyboard layout here, you can see that it also has the Chrome OS key layout versus what you might see on their other model that runs with Windows and Linux. This does not have a fingerprint reader like those other versions do, so you will need to set up a pin code or something to get in quicker into the operating system. The keys feel very nice here. They have decent travel. I think it's 1.5 millimeters uh, in travel, so they feel pretty good. And the trackpad also tracks quite nicely. And of course, everything here is replaceable. The only thing that I noticed on the keyboard is that there is a little bit of flex to it when you push down hard on it. So it's pretty sturdy and well-constructed. It is metal, but it does have a little flex here that you should be aware of. And that might just be one of the trade-offs for having very easy access to the internals. And the keyboard, of course, is backlit, which is something that we typically see on laptops at this price point. And you can turn the backlight on and off with this key here. 
Now, as far as ports are concerned, they are modular, like many parts of this system are. And what you've got here are these little modules that you can slide in or out that do different things. Now, the review loaner that we got had two USB Type-C ports and two USB-A ports, but you could very easily have it be four USB-C ports if you want. They also have storage modules available. And what you can do is just push down this button and slide them out. And as you can see, they're basically little USB Type-C modules, and the port inside is a USB-C. Now, the Windows and Linux version of this is Thunderbolt certified. This one isn't, but I did plug in a Thunderbolt Ethernet adapter earlier that goes up to 10 gigabits per second, and it was recognized by the system. But I would not expect there to be a lot of Thunderbolt compatibility here, so just be aware of that. But it looks as though these are at least... USB for certified ports and you can get different modules depending on what your needs are. So they have display output modules, they have the USB-C module here that will do power, video, and data. They have the USB-A ones and then of course you can get some storage to pop, pop into the side there as well if you wanted to go that route and those uh, will be presented to you when you place your order on Framework's website. Now the webcam here at the top will record 1080p video at 60 frames per second. It looks pretty good as you can see here. This is just under natural light in my kitchen and I think if you are doing your Google Meet calls and everything you should look pretty good on this camera. There is a physical switch to disable the camera. It doesn't cover the lens up but it does disconnect the camera electrically so you do have some privacy controls on it. And they have a similar switch for the microphone here as well. So right now, both the uh, mic and camera are disabled. And then if I flick them back into position here, it will switch them back on. Now the weight on this comes in at just under three pounds, 2.87 to be exact, or 1.3 kilograms. Like the other framework laptop we looked at, the build here feels pretty good. It's mostly metal. As you can see here, the display is pretty well balanced, so it doesn't pick up the keyboard too much when you lift up the display. It does go completely flat here, as you can see, but it's not a touch screen, so it does have a good range of movement here. feels pretty well constructed, and again, you've got all of that upgradability here. Battery life on this, I'm putting at around 8 hours, give or take, depending on what you're doing with it. It is a pretty bright display, so if you turn the brightness down and stick to basics, I think you'll do okay with it. But as we're seeing, Chrome OS is getting more and more complex, which is a good thing. You can do a lot more with Chrome OS, and you're going to see some really cool examples of what you can do with it in a minute. But if you're doing those cool things like Android apps and gaming and other things that really push the hardware a bit more than the basics, that's going to eat into the battery more significantly. But again, I think you can get through a workday if you stick to doing work on this device as you're working through the day. So let's take a look now and see how this performs. We'll begin with the basics here, some web browsing, and work our way up from there. And we are connected right now to a Wi-Fi 6 network. This does support Wi-Fi 6E. And of course, because it's upgradable down the road, you can add other things to it later. But as you can see, as we're browsing around the web here, things are popping up pretty quick and rendering quite quickly as well. And this is about what I would expect from a modern 12th generation Intel processor. So all the basic work stuff is going to be just fine on here. Let's take a look now and see how YouTube does on it. So here is a 1080p 60 video playing back from my YouTube channel. We did have a couple of drop frames when we first started, which is typical on YouTube from time to time, but it's able to keep up here and play back the video without issue, which is to be expected again with a 12th generation Intel processor. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 270, which is right in line with some other Intel processors we have looked at from this generation. Now you've got stereo downward firing speakers on this. They sound okay, but they do sound a bit flat to me. They don't have a wide range of sound. They are, though, pretty loud, especially when you're playing games and you do get decent stereo separation on them. Framework says that they actually upgraded the speakers over the prior edition of their laptop, and these speakers now are available to purchase for their other devices that they have manufactured in the past, so you can upgrade to a slightly better speaker. But I wasn't impressed with the sound quality for music. There is, though, a headphone jack here on the side, or you can attach Bluetooth headphones and listen that way. 
Now, like other Chromebooks, this has access to Android apps through the Google Play Store. It'll be front and center on your taskbar when you first load it up. And you'll find a good selection of games and other apps available. Just know, though, that some games don't work all that well on the Intel architecture. So I've had issues with Call of Duty Mobile, for example. So not everything is going to work great, even if it is available to download. But give it a shot and see what works. You don't have a touch screen here, so if the game doesn't support a controller, you might have to use the trackpad instead. One other note is that if you are looking to play back Netflix, I would go to the Netflix website versus using the app. And the reason is, is that Netflix does not support through its app high definition video through their Android app on Chromebooks, at least at the time I'm recording this video. But overall, I found the Android performance to be where I expected it to be. I've got a game here running called Horizon Chase that I downloaded from the App Store, and it's running at a nice smooth 60 frames per second here. My game controller is working with it, and I'm sure you'll find a lot of fun games in the store that will install and boot right up here on your Chromebook with a controller attached. But this Chromebook has some more tricks up its sleeve because it supports Steam natively, which is a new beta that Google has been rolling out on select Chromebooks, this being one of them. And this installs itself in its own container, separate from everything else. And when the installation process is done, you can download and install your Steam games just like you could on a PC. And this makes use of Steam's compatibility layer. So even if a game is not compatible with Linux, which is the underlying operating system of the Chromebook here, the game will run through that compatibility layer very similar to how it runs on the Steam Deck. Now, the first game I tried out is No Man's Sky. We ran it at a resolution of 1600 by 900, and we were able to get about 30 frames per second out of it most of the time. It was very playable, as you can see here. It looks great. The controller worked just fine. I had it wired in directly. And all in, it was a very playable experience and felt very similar to what it would feel like if we were running on Windows, for example, with this same processor. So that was really cool to see, especially because this is running natively on this Chromebook. We're not streaming this. It is running through Steam and this Proton compatibility layer. Very impressive and a very similar experience to uh, what I typically see on the Steam Deck. Now, we also ran another game, Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, this one is more demanding, so we had to turn the graphics down to 720p and put everything at the lowest settings. But once we did that, we got it going at 30 frames per second, and it played great. Again, through the Proton compatibility layer on this Steam Beta. And this is only going to get better for Chromebook users. I would imagine this is going to be limited to just Intel-based devices. But still, this is pretty cool. And I think it's an example of just how good the folks at, at Valve have gotten getting this compatibility with Windows games to work on non-Windows operating systems like uh, the Linux underpinnings of Chrome OS. So there's going to be a lot more on this. There will be more Chromebooks that are compatible with it. But this is a really good target machine for this because it is upgradable. And note that the graphics performance we're getting here is because we've got two sticks of RAM installed on this computer. If you only had one stick, you wouldn't see as good of a frame rate as you just saw here. So one of the things you'll want to do if you intend on running Steam games is to pop some RAM in it to fill out both slots so you can have a dual channel memory configuration. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark test, we got a score of 8,758 on the regular version of that test and 2,380 on the extreme version. So this performs a little under what you'd get out of a Steam Deck, but it is pretty capable, I think. Although the Surface Laptop Go 2 that has an 11th generation Intel chip did do a little better on that test. However, I was not able to run the PC version of 3D Mark on Steam here because it wasn't compatible. I had to run the Android version. So I wonder if we were able to get the PC version running, if we might see a slightly better score than what we got there. But either way, in a real world application like the two games that we played, it did quite well. Now, another thing you can do on Chromebooks is boot up Linux. And what you can do is install the Linux feature and when you do, you'll get yourself a command prompt here that you can use to install software. And this is running in a separate container 
then the Steam stuff is in. So everything is isolated from each other, including the Android apps. So there's a lot of protection between the different types of activities you'll do on the machine. So one thing can't uh, break something else. And what's cool about the Linux side here is that you can install Linux applications like LibreOffice here, where you can get yourself a free open source office suite that includes a word processor and a spreadsheet. You can load up another web browser like Firefox and have that running alongside uh, Chrome that's running natively within Chrome OS. So you can do a lot of Linux stuff here, even if you don't load up a Linux distribution directly on it. And that's one of the strengths of Chrome OS and certainly a strength of this high powered laptop. We got a lot of RAM and a lot of storage that we can throw at Linux apps here but keeping all of those applications isolated from the underlying Chrome operating system. Now, all Chromebooks, though, come with an end of support date, and this one has one as well. They've got this one at June of 2030, where it will no longer receive any security or operating system updates. I would expect, though, that the framework Chromebook will likely have more flexibility at the end of its life than many of the other Chromebooks that are out there. So I would expect that either through the core boot uh, firmware that we talked about earlier, or perhaps maybe from framework themselves, they can come up with a way that you could install a different operating system or install Chrome OS Flex, which is designed to run on legacy computers. But up until 2030, uh, this will be supported with regular updates uh, through Google for the Chrome OS operating system. So overall, this is a very nice Chromebook, which is for the most part the same as their other laptop. And there was a lot of discussion out there about framework pairing up with Google and releasing something that largely restricts what operating systems can run on it. But I think there's some strategy here. Now, I don't have any inside information on this, but in knowing how Chrome OS shops work, especially schools, the IT departments are constantly having to work on laptops that are coming back from kids who drop them, who break them, who pour water on them. And those IT shops have a really hard time getting parts. And more often than not, they're buying new computers and charging the parents for damage or whatever. And it's not good for anybody. But I think if Framework can work out something similar to this that costs less, it will work really well in schools. And my suspicion is that this is kind of the first step into that world. And although you're not gonna issue a $1,000 Chromebook to a kid, you might issue a $1,000 Chromebook to a school administrator or a teacher. And this is a way, I think, for those IT departments to start playing around with this hardware, seeing the flexibility of its modular design, especially when it comes to getting things repaired and upgraded that I think is gonna be very attractive to some of these places. It might give Framework a real market to go after here beyond just the tech enthusiasts like you and me out there who like upgradable laptops like this. So stay tuned. I think we're gonna see more on this and hopefully this works out well for Framework because this is a really nice Chromebook that gives us a real window into what Chrome OS is becoming. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.